Bible is okay with you worshiping another God beside them now? That's cool now? No, people. This stuff is witchcraft. What was witchcraft back then is still witchcraft now. It didn't change. It's still satanic. It's still devilish. But we don't know anything about this. And notice when we looked up the zodiac, it meant circle of animals. Remember saying that? Circle. Everybody knows when you're dealing with witchcraft, they have like these spell circles and things of that nature. All about 360 degrees and things of that nature. The revolving of the months. 360 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about this stuff. But we knee deep in it. We love it. You know what I mean? Hoping our children be born on certain days. Well, I hope my child be a Gemini. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is what we deal with. But we don't know any better. Because we Christians. The word Christian has become, have become synonymous with idiot. That, has, that would have become synonymous with. And in the French language, not original Greek, in the French language, that's what Christian meant. It was the same as Cretan, and it meant idiot. Mm -hmm. Almost like the French was making a prophecy. Either that or a proclamation, because by that time, Christian was already doing this stuff. And look at those idiots. And Christians are idiots. Not in general, it's just when they come to their own vow. they idiots. But you got to be a true Christian, the, of the original definition would of a follower of Christ or a follower of the Messiah, not a Christian as a Cretan, which means an idiot. Because a lot of Cretans out there calling themselves Christians. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But let's keep it moving. Let's go to, well, keep reading, keep reading. Verse 11. Mm-hmm. Or a charmer, mm -hmm. or a consulter with familiar spirit. A consulter with familiar spirit. That's somebody who talks to the dead. Go ahead and read. Or a wizard, or a necromancer. That's the same thing. Somebody who talks to the dead. Different degrees of this stuff, but he's covering all of it. Go ahead and read. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. All that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. If you deal with the horoscope, you are an observer of time. You are an abomination to the Lord. Abomination means something God hates. Meaning God hates you if you do this. He hates you. That's an abomination to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them off from before thee. God drove all the nations that were in the land before Israel out because they were doing these things. He let Israel run them out. Because they were dealing with paganism and witchcraft and sorcery. Mm -hmm. And you trying to tell me God is okay with you doing this stuff today? God made whole nations fall because they were dealing with this stuff. So what do you think going to happen to America one day? Because America is deep in it. Matter of fact, the whole world is deep in this stuff. Maybe now you can understand why the Bible says Jesus is going to destroy this world as we know it when he comes back. Because it's so wicked. And the main people who are supposed to be telling us what time it is, they are promoting it. Christians, don't, nobody promote paganism more than Christians. Mm. Nobody does it more than Christians. They the main ones, Merry Christmas, Winter Soul Sight, pertains to Mithra, the god Mithra, who was born on December the uh, 25th. Also goes all the way back to um, pagan Babylon, Tammuz. We deal with all that stuff. Merry Christmas. We promote paganism. The same thing with Easter. God is a fertility. Read about it in your Bible. Baal had a wife named Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth, Astarte, Easter. That's where we get Easter from. They ain't in the New Testament. Yes, it is. Read the book of Acts. You had this God that they worshiped called Diana. That's the Greek version of Ashtaroth. And Paul was speaking against her, which means Paul was speaking against Easter. That's the fertility guys. Why do you think it's a bunch of eggs and bunny rabbits associated with Easter? Eggs represent fertility because it would have to be fertilized for somebody to be born an egg. And bunnies represent fertility. They are the most fertile creatures in God's creation. That's why the playboy symbol is a bunny rabbit. It represents sex, people. But we don't know.
know he did anything, but who promotes it more than anybody? Around Easter time, which is all not too far from now, drive past these churches and look on their little billboards outside. Happy Easter. Come on, atheists promote no Easter? Even the pagans don't promote Easter like that. Christians do it better than anybody. We're supposed to be the world's eyes, the world's watchmen, and we more wicked than the rest of the world. We got to get away from this, people. And horoscopes is one of the main pagan things that Christians are knee-deep in. I ain't even going to say knee-deep. Neck-deep. Mm -hmm. All the way up the hill. We love it. But let's keep it moving. Let's go to Enoch. Let's see where all this stuff came from. I mean, it just burns me up. Somebody asked me, what's my sign? And they claim to be a Christian. Now, if you are a confessed pagan, and you ask me some stuff like that, I'll just tell you, man, I don't deal with that stuff, man. You know, that's you. But if you're supposed to be a Christian, you ask me that stuff? I don't deal with that stuff, man. Why are you dealing with it? You're supposed to be a servant of God. And that was so funny. And it would surprise me if some idiot... <laughs> After this class is over, we're going to try to come in as a Christian now and try to justify the horoscope. Well, I know it That's a shame. Enoch chapter um, 6. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. And then we're going to skip. No, it won't happen. It's page 13. You look for it at the bottom. <clears throat> Enoch chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Mm -hmm. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and left it after them, and said to one, and said to one another, Come, let us choose a wife from among the children of men, and begat our children. See, this is when these angels decided, it was 200 of them, decided to take wives from among mortal women. And they went into them and they bare them giants. Y'all know the story. We've read this many times. But go on over to chapter 7 and pick it up at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Let's see what these fallen angels taught mankind. Go ahead and read. Keep in mind, these are evil angels who are doing this. They're no longer good. After they did this, they fell to the dark side. Go ahead and read. And, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go into go unto them and, and to defile themselves with them. Mm -hmm. And they and they taught them charm. Oh, they taught them charm. Did we just read in Deuteronomy 18? A charmer? Mm -hmm. None among you shall be a charmer. Go ahead and read. An enchantment. Didn't it say an enchanter? Didn't it say that in Deuteronomy 18? Yeah. In chapter, you're going to be dealing with this stuff. It's wicked. It comes from the evil side of the spirit world. You're dealing with demons, people. That's what you're dealing with. Go ahead and read. And the cutting of roots. Mm -hmm. And made them acquainted with plants. And the cutting of roots. That's witchcraft. Even today, people still call witchcraft. Some people, especially like in like um, deep southern country places, or like New Orleans, they call witchcraft roots. You practicing them roots. Because they deal with herbs and all this stuff. As it pertains to witchcraft. It said these fallen angels taught these people this. You're dealing with evil spirits when you deal with the horoscope. But let me show you something else. Go on over to chapter 8 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them mm -hmm. and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and, and all kinds of coffee stones and all coloring tinctures. Now these fallen angels were giving mankind knowledge that he wasn't supposed to get yet or he wasn't ready for it yet. But it was also teaching them evil things too. Look at this. Go ahead. And there arose much godliness, and they committed fornication, and they were led astray, and became corrupt in all their ways. Mm -hmm. 
Sim Java taught enchantment. Sim Java, this is another fallen angel. He taught enchantment, witchcraft, sorcery. Go ahead. And root cutting. Uh huh. Amorize, the resolving of enchantment. He taught the resolving of enchantment. In other words, one angel taught how to make spells, and another angel taught how to break spells. Go ahead and read. Barbara Kudel taught astrology. Hold up. Barbara uh, Marakiel taught astrology? That's that zodiac stuff. But it said much godliness grew in the earth. Godliness means wickedness, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Cocobel, the constellation. Cocobel, the constellation. Star, there it is. Astrology, right next to the star. Zodiac stuff, people. Because that was the constellation, that was the zodiac is. It's the constellation split into 12 parts or signs. We looked that up, didn't we? Go ahead. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Uh-huh. Arachiel, the signs of the earth. Mm -hmm. And Shamsiel, the signs of the sun. See, we deep in the celestial bodies now. All of this stuff, as far as astrology is concerned, not to be confused with astronomy, is pagan. All of this stuff, it's devilish. This is what the horoscope is dealing with, people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Sorry, yeah, the course of the moon. Mm -hmm. And as men perished, they cried, and their cry went up to heaven. The whole earth became corrupt under this stuff. Just like the whole earth is corrupt with it now. Mm -hmm. But nobody promotes it more than Christians. Mm -hmm. Who do you know promote this stuff more than Christians? Everybody who ever asked you what your sign was, I will bet my last money that he was some form of a Christian. Whether he was a Pentecostal or a Baptist, I bet he was some kind of Christian. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever asked you what your sign is who wasn't a Christian. Nobody. Try to think of anybody off the top of your head who asked you that, and I bet you can't think of anybody who ever asked you that and they weren't some kind of Christian. Or claiming to be some kind of Christian. Mm -hmm. You can't think of anybody because Christians promote this stuff. That's why... Christians are going to be the first one to die when Jesus comes back. They're going to be the first because they are the ones who are corrupting the world more than anybody. If you haven't been going to church your whole life and your pastor had told you from the time you could understand the words in the Bible that you're supposed to deal with this stuff, zodiacal signs and birthday signs and all that stuff, you would not be doing it now. But he's never said anything to you about it. He just let you do it. You mean to tell me he's that out of touch with his congregation? No, he knows what they do. He's doing it with them. You can drive past the church right now and see on the sign the pastor birthday celebration. Yep. Mm -hmm. Doing Christmas time, got wreaths on the church door. Doing Easter time, got a cross in the church front yard with a mantle, a purple mantle on it. All of this stuff, pagan. The symbol cross, pagan. It comes from the un. You know the Egyptian aunt, which represent um, feminism. The Romans adopted it and made a torture stake out of it. Christians promote paganism more than anybody. We love it. You know what I mean? But we're supposed to be having the truth. But let me show you something else. Let's go to um, Second Kings. I think we've proven that the horoscope is satanic. Oh, okay, it's pagan. Israel knew this, but watch what Israel did, though, anyway. 2 Kings 21. 2 Kings 21 and verse 1. 21 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And his mother's name was Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So now we're about to define the evil that he did, right? Go ahead. After the abominations of the heathen. After the abominations of the heathen, after the things that God hates that the other nations were doing. Go ahead. Whom the Lord cast off before the children of Israel. 
Mm -hmm. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, mm -hmm. and reared up altars of Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Who are the hosts of heaven? What are the hosts of heaven? The stars, the moon, the sun, the planets. So now he's worshiping this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. Go ahead and read. And he built altars in the house of the Lord. Do y'all see what he's doing? He's trying to combine the worship of God with paganism. Mm -hmm. Anything he built an altar somewhere else, he put it right in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I know. So I got another class coming up called Unholy Fusion. Well, I'm going to show you that throughout history, when Satan realized he couldn't compete with God on the surface, he tried to be co-worshipped with God. Mm. You know, trying to combine. That's all Christianity is right now today. It's a mixture of truth and paganism. Unholy fusion. Unholy fusion. Good, one. Good title. And that's what we're going to be dealing with. Unholy fusion. That's what it is. Go ahead and read. I wish the Lord said in Jerusalem, will I put my name? Mm -hmm. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Understand some people, when you build an altar for somebody, that means you're worshiping it. But we already know he worshiped because he said it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And he made his son pass through the fire. He made his son pass through the fire. What else did he do? An observed time. And what? Observed time. What did horoscope mean? Somebody who views time. Mm -hmm. So he dealt with horoscope. Right. But then we just read it and say that was an abomination? Y'all, Israel is dealing with horoscope. God said it's an abomination. You deal with horoscope. You deal with horoscope. Praise the Lord. How can that work like that? He observed time. He was dealing with horoscopes. People, that's what he was doing. And God called that an abomination. He said he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Did he say that? Dealing with horoscope, people, is evil. This is plain. It's right there. We looked at horoscope and we seen the biblical definition of it right there. Observing time through the form of a zodiac. Oh, I'm going to get y'all that word zodiac in there too. I'm going to get y'all that. It's still this same zodiac. Uh, I'm going to show you that. We're going to get that out of there too. Don't worry. I'm leaving you nowhere to run. Go ahead and read. And use enchantments. And use enchantments. They go to that sorcery and witchcraft. Go ahead. And dealing with familiar spirits. Dealing with the spirits of the dead. This man was wicked, wasn't he? Go ahead. And wizards. And wizards. All of a sudden now, wizards is all the rage. All of a sudden, being a wizard is cool. Every time you turn around, you got all these movies, which I'm going to do another um, DVD, after the Matrix DVD, mm -hmm. dealing with these wizards in these movies. All of a sudden, being a wizard is cool. Being a sorcerer is cool. Disney is notorious for making sorcerers look cool. Did Nicholas Cage just do a movie not too long ago called The Sorcerer's Apprentice? Why is it that these movies are always trying to target young people? They could have did a uh, movie starring Nicolas Cage called The Sorcerer, about a grown man. No, it's about, an, it's about a man trying to induct a youth into witchcraft. You know, so it can appeal to the kids, get the kids want to do that stuff. Same thing with Harry Potter. It could have been a movie about a grown man named Harry Potter. No, they want to let it start off with children. Mm -hmm. So your children can be all into that. Witchcraft always aimed towards children. Sabrina, the teenage witch. Children, why don't they ever aim it at adults? Escape to Witch Mountain. Children again. Every time you turn around, it's the children they're trying to get. We don't think about any of this stuff. Why? Because we too busy to read our horoscopes. <laughs> Go ahead and read. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Oh, look, he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. What do you think you're doing when you deal with horoscopes, when you observe times? You provoking God to anger. Well, he never did nothing to me since I've been doing this. It don't mean he's not angry. And you know what? If he haven't done anything to you yet, that means he's been saving. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. And you dying and appearing before judgment day is a bad time to find out what God been saving for you. You better turn away from this stuff, people. I wish every Christian on the planet could be listening to this. Because after they hear, heard this, then you would know who's a true Christian, depending on if they continue to deal with the horoscope or not. Right. Then you'll know. 
A lot of folks don't really believe this Bible anyway. I want y'all to understand that. They don't really believe this Bible. A lot of Christians do know this stuff. They still deal with the horoscope. Israel knew this stuff. They do it up close and in person. God himself. They heard God himself say, don't do it. And they still dealt with it. So how do you think a Christian who ain't ever actually heard the voice of God will do? If it's somebody, if somebody who heard the voice of God can turn away from it, then you know somebody who ain't ever heard it can do it. But the thing about Christians is they have like this sort of self-righteousness about themselves. You know, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, said the Christian that worships the horoscope. Mm -hmm. Said the Christian who talks to his psychic on a regular basis. You talk to your psychic? I was saying you're supposed to deal with those type of people. You got a psychic, though. Psychic hotlines. Everybody who's calling these psychic hotlines, they go to church, people. Ain't no atheists and Buddhists calling these psychic hotlines more than Christian. They set up psychic hotlines in America, people. In America. You can be driving up the street and they got spiritual advisors with a hand, with an eyeball in it. Which represents they can see your future by looking at your palm. On the same block a church is on. If the Christians were doing their job, that person would have been ran out of business a long time ago. Because they would have let the whole neighborhood know, look, that's wicked. Y'all don't want to be dealing with that stuff. The person would have got no business and they would have had no choice but to move on. They wouldn't have to protest. They wouldn't have to um, violently force them out of there. All they had to do, just let the community know, the person would have realized they wouldn't get no business in that area and they would have moved. But yet, these places continue to thrive right down the street from the church. Now, how is that possible if it's supposed to be a Christian community? See, this Bible reveals a lot about people who claim to be servants of God. Y'all better think about this stuff. But now, let's keep it moving. Still in 1 Kings, turn to chapter 23. Or 2 Kings, still in 2 Kings. Turn to chapter 23. 23 and 1. 2 Kings, 23 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. Now this is about Josiah. He's gathering all the elders of Jerusalem, right? And Judah. Now skip down to verse 4 and continue. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priest of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made well, they said he commanded these people to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal. Like I told them, they kept trying to put this pagan stuff in God's temple. Mm -hmm. Just like the modern day church put paganism in the house of God or the church of God. They do that. Go ahead and read. And for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven, mm -hmm. and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kitron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And that's exactly what a lot of these so-called Christians need to do with everything they got that pertains to paganism. They need to burn it. He took this stuff out of God's temple and he burned it. But what else did he do? Go ahead. And he put down the adulterous priests. Idolatrous. Idolatrous priests. Mm -hmm. He Who put down, in other words, he fired them. He fired the idolatrous priests that did what? whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high place in the city of Judah mm -hmm. and in the places round about Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Them also that burned incense unto Baal. You burn incense to Baal, who else? To the sun. Uh -huh. And to the moon. Uh -huh. And to the planets. Mm -hmm. And to all the hosts of heaven. Who burn incense, because when you burn incense to a god, it's a form of worship, to Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. He said to the planets, didn't he? Mm -hmm. To the planets. Let me show y'all something. Let me look at that word translated planets. This is 4208 in the Hebrew section. The word translated planets there. 4208 in the Hebrew section. Watch what it tells you. 4208. Now here's the word. Mavala. Hmm. Mavala. What does it mean? In the sense of raining, 
a constellation, in other words, a zodiacal sign. A what sign? Zodiac. A zodiacal sign. So if he was burning incense to the zodiacal sign, that means he was worshiping it. Because he burned incense to Baal, that means you worship Baal. You burn incense to the sun, that means you worship the month, the, all the sun. You burn incense to the moon, it means you worship the moon. So if you burn incense to the planet, which is translated, uh, which is translated from the word Mabla, meaning zodiacal sign, anything he burned incense to meant he worshiped it. How did he worship it though? Because he was dealing with it. He believed it. That's the zodiac right there in your Bible. God called that an abomination. He called that an abomination. This guy was worshiping the zodiacal signs. Mavala. He was worshiping the zodiacal signs. How can you worship a zodiacal sign? Because each sign has a pagan god. And it hasn't changed to this day. Each sign has a pagan god, people. All of this stuff is pagan god. This man was worshiping the zodiacal sign. Israel was dealing with the horoscope. You just found out two ancient words for hor horoscope and zodiacal sign. The one for horoscope, observer of times. The one for zodiacal signs or the zodiac, mandala. We're going to read that one again, too. This is what they were dealing with. And you trying to tell me it's okay to deal with this stuff? God called an abomination. This guy Josiah, he saw all this stuff. He got rid of it. Josiah said, uh-uh, man, this stuff is evil. I'm getting rid of this stuff. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to do. Or you can keep dealing with this stuff and go to hell. The choice is yours. What? Let's keep moving. I'm going to get y'all that word horoscope in there, too. Let's find that word horoscope in there. Let's go to Isaiah. All this stuff originated with ancient Babylon. Isaiah 47. I don't gave you horoscope, the definition of horoscope, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I gave you the word zodiac or zodiacal sign when you look these words up because they tell you what they mean. That's what these folks were doing. God was rebuking these people. He was telling these people, no, this is wrong. This is evil. We even showed that it came from fallen angels, which means it came from the devil. And we still deal with it as Christians. And we wonder why we can't ever get anything we want out of life. I was talking to a sister not too long ago who used to study with us on a regular basis. And she stopped coming. I still kept in touch with her every now and then. And she learned so much when she was here. Then one day we was talking and she just brought up her sign. Your sign? Please, y'all, don't ever go out and shame absolute Bible truth like that. Don't ever tell nobody y'all study absolute Bible truth and you talking about your sign. Unless you talk about the Sabbath day, which is a sign between God and his people. Mm -hmm. Don't ever shame me like, you did not learn that from me. You learned that it's pagan and evil. Jeremiah 47. But the Bible says, he that wander off the congregation of the wise shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Isaiah 47. For the congregation of understanding. 47 and 1. This is God condemning Babylon. Go ahead and read Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There, there is no 